In this New World Weapon video, we're going to be taking a look at the Fire Staff. This is a ranged weapon that scales only off intelligence, so if you're going to want to play with a Fire Staff, you're going to have a significant amount of points invested into intelligence. One thing I want to note about this weapon is that the light and heavy attacks actually consume mana as well as the spells or abilities that you cast. So even when you're doing like regular attacks, you're going to be consuming mana. Which means that um, during the early part of the game, you may have issues with mana, um, particularly if you're spamming spells. Um, and you should probably, you know, buy or make some mana potions until you gain some of the passive abilities later on in the weapon tree that make the mana management a bit better. That way you're not sitting there waiting for your mana to recharge in between every couple enemies you kill, uh, you know, slowing down your progress. So the Fire Staff is an AoE weapon, meaning that besides the light and heavy attacks, every ability that you use is some form of AoE. Uh, this is not exactly the greatest thing when you're questing and you're trying to pick off one target at a time in order to maybe not pull more than you can handle, but it excels in situations where there are a lot of enemies. Maybe you pull a whole bunch of enemies when you're questing and you need to get rid of them real quick. Maybe you're doing a dungeon or maybe you're doing some medium or large scale PvP where there's a lot of players grouped up. It's really good in those situations, but it doesn't do amazingly in one-on-one -on -one situations. The main reason for that is not that the spells don't hit a lot or deal a lot of damage, it's that it's not mana efficient to use spells that are meant to hit multiple targets and that's factored into their mana cost to hit one player because eventually you run out of mana and then you'll be in a bad spot. Moving along to skills, we're going to look at the Fire Mage skill tree first, and the first ability there is Pillar of Fire. This is a single shot damage AoE, basically meaning it just damage, it just deals damage in an AoE over a distance. It doesn't have the longest distance possible, and I honestly find that when I use this ability that I often miss because it's weird, the depth perception on it isn't exactly great. Trying to land it can be rather difficult, and it costs quite a bit of mana for the damage that it deals. The next ability is Meteor Shower. This is a channeled ability that does damage over time in an area kind of raining meters down consistently while you sit there and channel. Because this is a channel and you can be interrupted by certain attacks from enemies or players, you're basically going to use this in a situation where you're not going to get hit. This means that you, maybe you're up off the ground and the enemies can't get to you because you're on a rock or something. Or maybe you're standing back in a dungeon and your tank's got everything so you can just rain down fire on everything. Or maybe you're in PvP and everyone's kind of grouped up in a ball and you want to rain down fire. These are really the situations you're going to use that. You're not really going to use it while you're out questing unless you can get your damage up high enough that you can kill things really quickly. Because otherwise you're just going to be interrupted and then it'll waste this ability. The next ability is Fireball. This is a bit of a weird ability to use because you fling it out. It doesn't really give you like a rectangle and where to aim. You just fling it out. You kind of got to figure it out. You get used to it after a little while like its arc and things like that. But it deals a little bit of extra damage over a regular attack in an AoE, and then it sets burning in that area that's going to deal damage to things standing in it. The best way I've found to use this ability is wait for enemies to, you know, get into melee range if they're attacking you, and then throw it at them while they're right in front of you, so they continue to stand in the fire while you're fighting them. If you try and hit them at a distance, you usually hit them with the fireball if you're lucky, then they just run out of the burning area and kind of waste a huge chunk of this ability. So, if you're out questing, Wait for them to get next to you. If you're in a dungeon, this works great. Just fling it into a group of enemies while they're on your tank and watch them burn. Same with PvP. Wait for them to, you know, group up, throw it in there. Or if you're fighting a single player, throw it at his feet when he's on top of you. That way he has to continuously stand in it while he's fighting him. The capstone for this skill tree basically increases your damage by a lot uh, while you stand in place. This is very hard to do, except maybe during boss fights of dungeons. If you're out questing, you're not really going to be able to stand in place. You're going to need to avoid attacks. And if you're PvPing, same thing. So maybe if you're only doing dungeons or you're setting up for dungeons or some hard dungeon runs, you would take this one. Otherwise, you would take the other one. Moving along to the Pyromancer skill tree, the first ability is Incinerate. It's kind of a quick animation that does an AoE around you and sets enemies on fire. I really, really like this ability. It has great implications in sort of pulling lots of enemies or PvP. You can just run and pull them, pop this, set them all on fire, deal incredible damage. When it's fully upgraded, it hits twice, which is excellent. Uh, and it's an excellent use. A lot of these spells in these trees aren't worth it until they get upgraded, meaning that you're going to be doing like a lot of light attacks and stuff early on in the game um, as you get these upgraded and they become more mana efficient. The more passive things you add to these, the more mana efficient they become. Some of them even return mana, making them even more mana efficient. So once you start getting these upgraded, they get really, really good. The next ability is Flamethrower. This is an ability that channels like a stream of fire in front of you over a certain distance that sets enemies on fire and deals damage over time while it channels and sucks your mana. It's not very mana efficient at all. It'll drain tons of your mana for the damage it deals. So I don't recommend using this while you're like out questing or something like that. 
under the right situation, if you can get enough enemies grouped together, maybe in a dungeon or in PvP, it would be worth using. But you're not going to be very efficient using it on one or two enemies or players at a time. And it's also a channel, so it can be interrupted by attacks. So you want to make sure that you're not going to get hit when you use this ability. Otherwise, there's no point in using it. The last ability is called Burnout. It's a mobility skill that allows you to sort of like shoot forward and set enemies on fire while dealing damage to them. It's a really, really good ability, not only for mobility, for any, you know, build that you're making. If you match it with like, let's say a Rapier, for instance, uh, and you do like a, an intelligence build with your Rapier and a Fire Staff, uh, you would not only have the mobility skill from this, but you'd have the mobility skill from Fletcher and you'd be able to like make up a lot of ground real fast, catch up to enemies or get away from enemies. It's really good. Um, and you can use it in groups to set lots of things on fire or to reset and get away. It's just a really good overall ability, probably one of the best abilities in this uh, tree or weapon trees. There are a few good options to mix your fire staff with in terms of like what your secondary weapon would be. You have the rapier, as I mentioned, which can work. You also have musket if you prefer to have some like really long range as well as mid range and medium range, short range with the staff. Uh, you can use the Ice Gauntlet to mix and match uh, some more AoEs in there if you want to drop AoE after AoE on targets or maybe slow them down a bit. Um, it's also not a bad choice. So you got a lot of things you can do, but those are probably the weapons you're going to want to mix it with. If you want some melee, really your only option there is the Rapier. So keep that in mind when you're figuring out what weapon you want to use as your secondary. Something else I do want to mention is that weapons that have gem slots in them, you can socket gems into them to make them in scaling. Certain gems allow for int scaling on these weapon types, weapons that don't normally scale off int, so you could theoretically use like a great axe and a fire staff. It won't be as effective in my testing um, as doing like a pure strength build on a great axe, but it does give you the flexibility to mix and match weapons that you wouldn't normally. So keep that in mind, that's something you can also do. In terms of armor, something I want to mention is that light armor or medium armor are probably the way to go here. The reason for that is these increase your damage. Light armor is plus 20%, medium is 10%, and at light armor you get a dodge roll. This is very good for creating separation. Fire staffs are a ranged build, even if it's short range. So you don't want to be up in melee range if you can avoid it, um, because you're going to be trading damage, especially if you're wearing light armor. It's not a good scenario for you to be in. So that dodge roll allows you to create separation and keep space there where you can attack them, but they can't attack you. And also, because it increases your damage by 20%, all your spells and everything and your attacks are going to deal more damage. And that's the ideal, right? That you're dealing damage without getting hit, and you're dealing the most damage possible. Stay tuned for more weapon guides as we cover all 11 weapons for New World, and be sure to check out our New World wiki if you have further questions about the game or drop by the Twitch channel. I'll be streaming this at launch so I can answer those questions. So what do you guys think of the Fire Staff? Is it something you use to play the game? What other weapons do you like to pair it with? Let us know in the comments below.